Fletcher, who's a criminal justice expert from New York. Now, during uh, the 9-11 attacks, he was responsible for the supervision and recovery of victims from the World Trade Center complex. Uh, Darren, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Uh, we understand the authorities are still trying to understand a motive. Um, what sorts of things will they be looking at? Well, in law enforcement, we, we use the term backwards investigation. What the, back, what the backwards investigation consists of is we're going to start from where the assailant is lying in a hospital bed, and we're going to progress all the way back to when he first left his house this morning to come into that school for this violent attack. There's, there are going to be a couple of components that we're going, to, we're going to look to assess. One, we're going to get into his computer. We want to see what his social network looks, what, looks like. Who did he attempt to reach? out did he make any threats now as of now law enforcement has not introduced any sustainable threats against this particular school however we need to look into the various aspects of social media be it Facebook Instagram etc in addition to that we have a unique situation where is the assailant is alive under most circumstances the assailant is, is, is usually dead very rarely do we have an assailant that's alive usually the assailant is either he or she either commits suicide or they're neutralized by law enforcement as a result um, but here this particular individual attempted to commit suicide and he was unsuccessful in addition to that we have the assailant's mother and the assailant's girlfriend that are currently um, working with police and cooperating, so to speak, as to what this individual's motive may have been. In addition to that, what's more important is he turned 16 today. However, he was in possession of a 45 caliber handgun. In the state of California, it's illegal for a minor to be in possession of a handgun because you need to be 21 years of age. So we as law enforcement are going to look into how he acquired that weapon. And if we find there was an illegal means, we would subsequently prosecute that person accordingly. Yeah, I mean, just on that issue of, of how a 15-year-old, as you say, he turned 16 today, so he would have been 15 when he actually... Um, took that semi-automatic weapon into his possession. Do you think this is likely to reignite America's gun debate? Well, this wouldn't be something that falls within the purview of gun control because this is clearly an illegally obtained firearm. If it was a gun control issue, then it would be we would look at a situation where we had a 21-year-old that lawfully acquired a firearm and used it in the commission of a crime. That's not what we have here. We have a criminal that acquired a firearm through illegal means. Therefore, right, but a lot of people will be wondering how a, how a 15-year-old can get his hands on a. A lot of people will be wondering how a 15-year-old can get his hands on a weapon like this in the States? Well, there, there are several things that could have happened. This could have been a stolen firearm. He could have acquired this firearm by breaking into someone's home, or it could have been acquired by means of a straw purchase. When I say a straw purchase, means when you have someone that lawfully obtains a firearm but illegally sells the firearm. You have people that oftentimes do these things. And I give you an example. California has some of the toughest gun control, I should say Los Angeles, because this area is in close proximity to Los Angeles. Los Angeles has some of the toughest gun laws in the country. So what you have oftentimes is criminals from Los Angeles that will go to adjoining states and acquire firearms through members or, or I should say residents of the adjoining state illegally. And that's how these people would acquire and they would sell these guns to the Los Angeles resident, which would be an illegal sale and then it would be used in the commission of a crime. We don't know what happened. It could also be a situation where the gun may have been in possession of his parents and his parents were faulty in their method of securing the weapon. These are all questions that haven't been answered. So at this point, we're still at somewhat of a deciduous state. And as we ramp up the investigation more, we'll have more formidable information that we can introduce as it relates to what the ideology behind the shooter was in this horrific crime. Darren, thanks so much. Darren Porcher uh, joining us there live from New York.